Welcome to the Christy Taylor Show. I'm your host, Christy Taylor. And this is a special show on so many levels. First of all, in honor of Black History Month, we're going to be talking about Black music that is global and is also special because the recording artist, composer, and arranger that I'm going to be chatting with is a very special friend of mine. I want you to help me welcome Keith Childress, recording artist, composer, and arranger. He was born in Newark, New Jersey. Jersey. And after graduating from Orange High School in Orange, New Jersey, he attended Mount Clare State University, where he began to seriously write music. He was the director of the outstanding 120 voice Mount Clare University Gospel Choir. Now, Keith later transferred to Oral Roberts University, where he sang with the Oral England. Now, this musical genius is also, as I said, a very dear friend who I had the pleasure of touring with in the 1980s as a Keith Childress, welcome to the Christy Taylor Show. Thank you, Christy. So glad to be here. It's an honor and a privilege. You know, I, as I read your bio, it is so many missing parts. That's all we can squeeze in in this moment because, and I did say 40 plus, and, and you will probably have to correct me, but you've been in this musical world a long time. And we're just going to be able to scratch the surface in this conversation on today. But I must say, Keith F. Childress, it's good to see you. It's good it's to good see to you. It's good to know that you're still making music. And we, as a matter of fact, Jersey. All right, let's take it back to Jersey. Born and raised. Yes. <laughs> so tell me about your upbringing and where did you get your musical start? Well, I started, I begged, um, they, they made me be in the usher, usher board, which I hated because I hated walking in front of all those people. I started out at Zion Hill Baptist Church and I begged to be in the choir to get in the choir until I was 10. And that's when I started taking music lessons. I begged for music lessons from the age of five because I wanted to do music from the time I was an embryo. So... <laughs> Wait a minute, Keith. I never knew that you served on the usher board. I never oh, knew that. And I get fussed at sitting in the back with my friends laughing and talking. Brother Huffer fussed at us. <laughs> but I hated it because then, especially when I had to walk down the center aisle in front of everybody holding the plate, it was like torture to me. But the thing that gave me life and gave me energy and gave me purpose was singing when I got to be in the junior choir and we would rehearse every Friday night except the Friday night after the third Sunday because we sang on the third Sunday and I hated that Friday night because I wasn't going to choir rehearsal. We walked to choir rehearsal in Newark, New Jersey. Wow. So first of all, uh, out of all the years that we've known each other since the 1980s, I never knew you served on the usher board because I've only known you as a musical genius. And I'm so grateful that <laughs> they finally <laughs> let you in that choir. <laughs> now, when you began to junior choir at, at, you said Mount Zion? No, Zion Hill Baptist Church. That's where I started. Zion. Then then I went to Kojic when I was around 18, when I got old enough to be to make my own decisions. I went to Church of God in Christ. Wow. And of course, the grand old Church of God in Christ. We got a lot of history, you and I, with that amazing denomination. So it's, yes. it's between the age of 10 and 18 that you apparently really fostered your musical uh, ingenuity. So was it just at church or did you also? No. Okay, just I actually, and I don't, 
I don't know how I still look back and say, my parents really let me do that because they were like, they were strict. And I played in a band and we played in shows. Um, we I played in shows with people like the Delphonics, the Manhattans. Our, our band, all it was my guys, we went to the same high school. Some of us went to different high schools, but it was our band called Full Version. First we had the New Techniques, then it was Full Version, Full Version Funk. We played in shows with, uh, uh, the uh, uh, what's the name? Junior Walker and the All Stars, the Manhattans, the uh, uh, what's the name? Oh Lord, have mercy! I can't think of his. Name. Were these in in the New Jersey or Philadelphia area? Because I know, of course, that whole East Coast run. Yeah, we played in New York and New Jersey. We played in a, in a, a club called the Cheetah. I played in shows. We opened for James Brown. We did shows like that. We were 16. We played in a place called the RKO where the Delphonics and um, Cool Cool, cool in the Gang. That's the group I'm trying to think of. Cool oh in the Gang. Goodness. We played in shows and they were talking about those, those teenagers, those, there were some bad blankety blanks. <laughs> <laughs> when did you start playing the instrument? You know, because I know you had to beg to be in choir. So when did you start your... Well, it's, it's funny, it's around the same time I was 10. And then I started taking lessons from Sister Gibson, who played at my church. And it was her son who was running for the mayor. Mm. It's funny, I shouldn't have said it. But anyway, I have to tell my story. I didn't have a piano at home. I was That's when I lived in Newark, before I moved to the suburbs. <laughs> I didn't have a piano. And um, she thought, I mean, the same way I play Silent Night, I play it now. Wow. But she told my mother, He'll never be able to play. He's all he can play is Silent Night. But you know what? When I moved to I moved to the suburbs, I got a new teacher, and the next the next Christmas I was playing, and she was sitting. She was the only person sitting in the um, in the choir stand, and I was playing "What Child Is This?" Playing the organ. What? With my foot and two hands. Wow. She was in shock because wow. I was determined that I that that was my purpose. But I didn't. But she didn't realize. Yeah. The genius, the fact that I didn't have a piano at all at my house. Wow. You know, to hear your perseverance is it's a thread that I know very well about your life, uh, and how hard you've had to fight for music is is actually quite astonishing to hear, Keith. Um, it kind of explains some of the subtext of what I know about you. <laughs> so you've had to fight for music. You had to fight yes. to be in the choir. You had to really press uh, to be recognized and, and, and hone your skills as a instrumentalist. And at the, at the first college, I, I was trying, I never was a music major. I auditioned and I think it was a racist thing going on, but I never... I auditioned twice and I never made it. And I was wondering what would I be doing if I had made it? But God has different plans. Mm -hmm. God has different plans, but I still pressed on. And I had a 120 yeah. voice choir at that college. Those children, they, they're children now, <laughs> senior <laughs> citizens. <laughs> but Those they, back they then. <laughs> sing. Oh my God, I had 120 voices of all singers. And that's when I really started writing. That's when I really started writing at Montclair State. I had the band was awesome. Wow. Myron Smith was a keyboard player. His Lance, his cousin Lance, and Lance's brother Cordell played drums. And then I forgot the bass player's name, but they were all good. We had we had an awesome band. We had an awesome choir, and we would travel. We sang at Howard University, and we sang so that they ran back up on stage and. Came back to sing, but I was never one that tried to compete. I just loved doing it, and I just wanted to glorify God. I just loved. I was, I was young, and I just wanted to do it. I loved writing the songs. I loved writing with Myron, and we coming up with new songs. They're hearing the choir singing. It was just amazing to me. I was, I'm serious. I was never the person that was trying to compete with any other choir or any other person. I just loved what I was doing. I love it to this day. I love music. 
Indeed you do, because you're still a music teacher to this day. You're still, yes. you know, fostering new talent. Uh, I want to talk about you as, of course, as a, as a vocalist and as a songwriter, but you also really moved. And I see, you know, with you playing in bands, even the Delphonics um, and Cool and the Gang, when did composing and arranging music, because a lot of people can sing and write a song, but you're really good, Keith, at composition and arranging, uh, arrangement. Uh, let's talk about that. It, you know, so I get inspired. Like this, I'm telling. Like when I, we spoke earlier today, I was sending yeah. a song that I started this morning. This morning, well, I'm just going to be transparent. When I woke up, I was. You know, you have thoughts about things that are going on and things that are not going on in your life. Mm -hmm. I woke up, I was depressed. Depression was chasing me. Mm. And um, there was the craziest thing, because I have smoothies. I don't eat eggs and bacon for breakfast. I have mm. smoothies, you know, with with uh, spinach and raspberries and all those kind of things, anti-inflammatories. Um, and so I was telling my son, I could not find the top to the bl uh, blender. And I just said to my son, because he's getting ready to work, I said, you know something? It's times like these, something like can't, not being able to find the top for the blaze, the, the blender will just blow you, <laughs> you yeah. know, send you right over the right. edge. It's just, but I got to school and we have devotion every morning. I teach at the Christian school. And one of the things she's talking about, think on these things that the scripture she's talking about, you know, what the, whatsoever thing is true or honest and so on and so on. And then when I got to the room, God was giving me another song. And then we have devotions also with the students over the intercom. And I had the music. And then um, our administrator, she was doing devotions over the intercom this morning. And she said, my favorite scripture since 1977 was um, Isaiah 41.10. I said, okay. And God gave me that. And I'm telling you, the whole day, that's been it. I guess, you know, kids, even though it's a Christian school, kids are kids. Yeah. <laughs> Challenges. <laughs> so you <laughs> actually, yeah. Out of, out, of today's, out of today's experience, you composed a song. And yes. I want to I want to run it back to you said your favorite scripture since the 1970s. Now we met in the 1980s when I was attending Or Roberts University. Yes. Now you of course initially after high school went to Mount Clair where you were over there, amazing choir, but you ended up in Tulsa, Oklahoma. How yes. did that happen? How did you get from Jersey to, to Tulsa? Well, there's a, um, a good friend of mine. He's going on to be with the Lord. And um, his name is David Lawrence. And he he had a choir at another school, another college in New Jersey. We became friends. Mm -hmm. And David told me that there was an opening in this group at this college that he was going to, Oral Roberts University. I really, I think I heard it from my friend who sang in my group, Dorcas Cotton. Her name was, Dor her name was Dorcas Cotton at that time. Yes. And yes. so, um, and so I, he told me about it, this guy leaving the group and there's an opening for a black person. And so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, because let's establish that Oral Roberts University up until probably the early 2000s was a, a very low ratio of minorities, particularly black, African-Americans, Negroes, coloreds, <laughs> all the names that we've been called throughout the ages. <laughs> so for you to be um, tapped to actually sing, you were replacing the one uh, African-American who was singing. And who was that? Let's drop a name. Bishop Carlton Pearson. He left the group to uh, go on the road. He had you know, singers that went with him in his evangelistic ministry. And he left the group to go full time on the road. And that opened up a spot. And I auditioned for that spot. I sent my cassette tape <laughs> in 1977 wow. to, to him, to, I mean, to um, the leaders. And then I'd never flown on a plane in my life. Ooh. And I came home from work. I was working at a school called Christ Academy. And so I drive, I got home, it was around four o'clock and my mother said, the people from that school called and um, they want you to fly out tomorrow. 
What? And so I called the school. They said, yes, I'll fly out tomorrow. And they would reimburse me. And it so happened that I had taken um, $100 out to loan to a friend of mine. And the flight at that time, it's 1977, round trip, even the day before, cost $138. Back in the day. Back, Back in, the day. in the day. That was a <laughs> long time ago. And my parents gave me the $38. I flew out there and I met Gordon Twist. He was the director. And David played for me the morning David that Lawrence. I got. David the, Lawrence. Yes. And the morning that I got up, I doubt tried to come in, but I was listening to family radio and they talked about that scripture from James that talked about if you doubt, you know, you don't don't expect anything to happen. Mm -hmm. So that 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 blessed me. And then I'd never flown on a plane. I know you're supposed to swallow and chew gum when the plane was land <laughs> plane was landing. And Oklahoma is as has a low altitude. Yes. I had an earache. Ooh. I had an earache and my ears were stopped up. But I sang and Dave was playing a song. One of the, it's funny, I practice all this stuff, the musical theory stuff. And Dave was playing a song that we sang in Church of God in Christ. <laughs> and we were he was modulating, changing keys. And at the end of Gordon said, Wow, you never went flat once. And that was God letting me know that he was with yeah. me, even though my ears were stopped up and yeah. irate, but God was on my side. Yes. And God opened up that door. Wow. And I was playing, there was a choir that I was playing for back home in Jersey. I came back home. They had a, their choir anniversary the next week. I gave it to my friend. I said, well, somebody got to get somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> because let me, week, let me help, for those who don't understand, back in the in the 70s particularly, there were a lot of, um, this is predating mega ministries. This is predating the age of mega church ministries where you had, you know, Billy Graham or Roberts, um, you had uh, like uh, was Robert Schuler. You had the the classic yeah. TV evangelists of from the forties, fifties, and sixties who were now moving into the television age. Yes. and and Or Roberts, of course, was always um, at the forefront of making sure that there were a lot of diversity, or at least because he had Native American in him, where he did yeah. have representation. Uh, and he, he made a point. I would say he made a point. And, and for those who um, probably missed it, so Keith Childress, who you're looking at right now, he actually replaced Bishop Carlton Pearson. You know him as Bishop Carlton Pearson now. But Carlton Pearson not only was a world action singer that was touring with Oral Roberts, he leaves the group to go full-time ministry for himself and also to tour with Oral Roberts himself. And of course, Keith comes in to be a world action singer, which becomes the Oral Roberts TV singers. Um, yes. and you get World to, action singers. That's what we were called, the world action singers at that the time. world action singers at that time. And you got a full ride to the university. Full ride. And it's funny because at Monkler State, I had taken out, I had to take out loans. I had taken out some loans. Because I had messed up and my mother said, oh, no, the next time you're going to pay for it. And when littlest children tell you, that's it. That was it. Because I messed up. So I took out a loan. And to open up that door. Wait a minute. You took out a loan for Mount Clare. Yeah, for Mount Clare. Back home. But yes. Mm -hmm. But for all Roberts University, when I got there, because I sang on TV, I had a full scholarship. I didn't have to pay for books. I didn't have to pay for classes. I didn't have to pay for a uh, cafeteria for food. <laughs> Everything was paid for. And in the summers, there was um, an accrued scholarship that if you stayed in the group and didn't have to use it for education, you got money at, when you graduated. But the the group, um, they got, the group got smaller. So I had to use some of my semesters for my education. But then when I ran out, they made the group larger. Look at God. They made the group large. I got back in the group. Wow. And they paid for my senior paper, which I had to do after after the last after I graduated. Yeah. You know, one of one of the chapters of this amazing story, um, and I'm gonna try and skip to because we, we're just talking about the 70s and the 80s. Um, is in the 80s I attend and I'm I'm a baby straight out of high school. Me too. And and uh, <laughs> That's right. Keith is for is he's forever ageless, forever ageless. <laughs> um, 
Um, at this time, you're not singing with the World Action Singer, but you are a great support to another group that Carlton Pearson started when he was on campus, which was Souls of Fire, which of yes. course my cousin and plenty of my cousins were also members of prior to me getting there in the mm -hmm. early 80s. Um, so let's talk about our friendship that sparked and just some of the wonderful things that happened after you finally went back to the East Coast. So your oh Souls goodness. of Fire experiences. My, it's funny. I met, I just happened, somehow I just keep this relationship with All Arts University. And it was a few years after I graduated. Somehow I'm there on campus. I don't even remember how. I meet David Smith. Yes. And who then was my, we, who was, we. Yeah, was, David was my minister of music when I was a Souls yes. of Fire. Yeah. And me and David became, and still to this very moment, we are the closest of friends. Mm -hmm. And I um, I ended up going on two tours. <laughs> I'd already graduated. I thought that was so funny because I think I was a freshman and a sophomore. And you and Dorcas, who you mentioned earlier, who you knew from New Jersey, and you both ended up becoming world action singers and traveling the world with Oral Roberts and others. Um, but when you came back and you all sang with us, I mean, of course, we won't tell all our family jokes on this, but I'll just say <laughs> one of the ones is- The word I, worthless. I, we won't even talk about the word worthless. <laughs> it's so many so many great tours, because we actually toured, and we're talking about not, not in a uh, tour bus, but on vans, and one yes. time we got real fancy and had a Winnebago. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes. And then but, we we also went to the Bahamas. Yes, with Miles Monroe. We yeah, because Miles went to school around my time. Robert he was in school with me. Yes, you and Raphael, Mark Ivory, who were my cousins. Um, yeah, and he be later became just like um, Carlton Pearson regents for the university. But yeah, Miles Monroe, because when we went, to, yeah, when we flew, we uh, we made it down to Florida and we had to fly over to the Bahamas. We were there a nice little minute too. Yes. We were over there in the Bahamas at the Bahamas Faith Ministries. God bless that man's legacy. Oh my yes, God. Miles awesome. Yeah, he was he was true. Now, of course, once you finally make it back to the East Coast, uh, kind of catch me up on because you when you were a world action singer, when you were Souls of Fire and ministries that you were involved in in Tulsa, you did a lot of writing. And some of the songs that you wrote back then in the 80s, I started hearing on the radio when I was playing gospel music years later. Can we talk about how that happened? Well, it's funny, one of the, the first time one of my songs got recorded by a major artist, he came to our church, Marsh Chapman, and somehow through, because he was the minister, one of the other musicians at my church was, who's from California, he was friends with Marsh Chapman. And Marsh Chapman came and somehow Marsh Chapman came, I got to know him and sent a song that me and David arranged Behold how good and pleasant it is for yes. us to dwell together. And um, and he recorded it. And um, He had a major record deal at that time with Hosanna Music and Integrity Music. Yeah, yeah. he was yeah, he was the bomb. Yeah. He was the bomb. And who else um, did you work with after that? After Ron Cano Ron Cannoli also worked with you? Yes, I worked with Ron Cannoli, did some recording, a song he recorded, and also um through your brother. Uh, Carmen Michael Anthony Taylor, gotta call yes, his name. Michael Anthony Taylor, he's been a blessing to my life. Carmen and Lunda Larman, who's from Canada, yeah. and Michael always got me in the mix some kind of way, yeah. And of course, now he has his own record label, Dare Records. And uh, I know that there's so many other great things that you all would do together. Um, there's another one of our friends who sang with us in Souls of Fire, Judith Christie, who later married Darren McAllister. So yeah. many of her is Dr. Judith Christie McAllister. And there was a song that she actually did on one of her praise albums that you kind of touched. Can we talk about that? Okay. In 1980, this is before I even met Judy. In 1980, when I was on tour, one of those times I wasn't in the world action singers, I was on tour. I was the music director, music director for Souls of Fire. I was, we were in Tyler, Texas, I believe, at a Methodist church, and they did Psalms 3. I had never heard that before, and it blessed me. I had it on my cassette tape. 
So I put my own little touch on it. And somehow when Judy, when Judy came, um, Dr. Judith. Well, she was just Judy back in the day when we were all on campus. (laughs) My buddy. She's still my buddy. New York. Yes, exactly. But she, um, she came, she was like an assistant to me at my church, Northside Christian Center in Tulsa, Mm -hmm. Oklahoma. And she learned the song then. And she ended up doing her album. Then what's his name? Did it again. Uh, Brian Byron Cage. Yeah, Byron Cage. Yeah. And that's but, when I really flipped because I knew she had done it, you know, when she was at West Angeles, Should have got in Christ. Um, and her other songs that she did, like to do in the morning. But when Byron Cage ended up doing it, and I, at this time I'm a radio personality for one of the top FM gospel stations in Memphis, and I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. And I did it. You know what? I recorded it too, with, with it was with a choir in London. Pastor Matthew yes. Ashimalowo's church. Yeah. And um Kingsway, Kingsway Temple, I think it's but anyway, they <laughs> I did a recording with them. Wow. And I we, we recorded it there. And we had a little a little reggae feel to it. Speaking of that, Keith, you have had a, a strong impact within the Christian faith here in the States. And I know Bishop T.D. Jakes in the Potter's House have done your stuff. Michael Stampley, as I noted in your bio, Beverly Crawford. But you have done a lot of global uh, representation, too, going to Trinidad, going to London, going to Africa. How did you build those relationships where your music has become timeless? And okay, I've, around the world? I've gone to, I think the first, well, we all, we went to the Bahamas together. But the first time, other than going to the Bahamas, the first place I went was one of my friends, um, LaDonna. She's Pastor um, Turnell Nelson's daughter. Yes, I loved her. And LaDonna had me come to Trinidad. And that was the first place that we sang that, that other than in the States. I think that was the first place ever we sang, We Lift You Up. I don't know if you remember my song, We Lift You Up. Yes. But yes. I'm telling you, when they sang it there, the power of God fell so heavily that people were, for like about 20 minutes, people were just on their faces before God. And so through different connections, sometimes I go back, I call it the choreography of God, choreography of God. How I've been to Africa, I've been to, and Beggy brought me to South Africa. Becky Gamese, who yes. also took but, but I went to even South Africa. I went there before mm-hmm. him through somebody else from New Jersey. I went there when I, I was only married for about a year. Yeah. And we had moved to, what were we living in, Florida? Yeah. yeah. And through another group, and the, and the person in who was supposed to go didn't go. I ended up being a music director for a group for the first year um, after they had, after apartheid had been dismantled. So I've been to Africa. I've I've been to um, South Africa. I've been to Swaziland. I've met the king of Swaziland, presented my CD to him. I've been to the Congo. Mm -hmm. Um, Oh, there's someplace else. Zimbabwe. That's where Zimbabwe is where I recorded the video. As a matter of fact. In London. In London, Jamaica, in Trinidad. And Bahamas and Canada and and um, Grenada in South America, and God just just opened up, and He's not done with me yet. No, He's not done with you yet. As a matter of fact, you know, this is going to be an extended play. And so, for those who are watching on television, I want you to know right now, you can watch the full episode by going to my YouTube channel. That's YouTube. Search for Christy Taylor online. Or you can do a YouTube search of the Christy Taylor Show. This is going to be for the extended version of this interview with Keith F. Childress. Um, And just for a moment, we're going to be sharing his music. So be sure to check out the full episode on YouTube. (laughs) When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. No matter what you're facing today, it's going to be all right. It's already worked out. So that means if it's all right, it's going to be all right. And just take these words with you and let it bless your life. Know that God's on your side. Sing it, girls. Come on, y'all. It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. Favor is on your side. God will make time to It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. Just a man do not fear. No matter what your eyes see. Hey, 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 hey. I see. 
Childress, oh my God, I totally love that song. Oh, thank wow. you. There's now, a story behind that. Well, first of all, okay, I want the story, but who was the vocalist? Well, of course, me and um, my friend Tim Balami. He's well, he's like a son. He calls me Papa. Of course, I'm too young to be anybody's Papa, right? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, he's my Tim Balami. He is all over. He's um. He has two children, a wife, and um, he is amazing. He's just, um, we're family. And it's, it's funny, the way I met him, I was going going, going to Zimbabwe, and I was listening to the music because the person who I was going to, uh, the church I was going to in Zimbabwe, she also was in the World Action Singers. And her husband, she and her husband are two white Americans. And they, um, Bonnie used to be, She's Pastor Bonnie Gichelle now. She used to be at um at ORU. Then she went for Christ for the Nations. And she met her husband, I think, in three days they were engaged. And then within six months, I think, they both moved. God told them, go to Zimbabwe. They raised all their children in Zimbabwe. Their children are grown. And children, are, uh, I think, a few of them went to ORU. And, um, but I was listening to her music online. And then I heard this, this, this kind of African sound. I said, whoa, this is hot. He was singing, um, uh, Yes, Lord, the one that um, Israel did. Yes, Israel. I'm trading my sorrows. Yes. And first he sang it in Shona, and then he was singing it in English. I said, this is hot. So I said, let me find him on Facebook. So I found him on Facebook, and I said, hey, I'm coming to Zimbabwe. I would like to, you know, we go, we go, I could like to meet you. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm coming to Celebration Church International, in Harare. And then I got the message back. He said, well, I got news for you. That's the church I go to. And I'm on the <laughs> worship team. So I ended up meeting him. He's like family. I stayed one time. Well, I stayed at somebody at this big mansion before somebody else's house in Zimbabwe. But then um, I stayed at his, I've stayed at his home. He's come here. He stayed at my home. He came to the States. He's a son. He's like real son to me. Yeah. Awesome, awesome musician. Now, and I've met an awesome producer that? as um, Mac D. Yeah. Or the song that I did today, Mac D will put the stink on it. 
<laughs> now, of course, the song that you just we just featured, you said there's a story that goes with it. What's that oh, story, yes. Key? Okay, this was back in like 2006. My wife was upstairs. She was doing online banking. She was fighting depression because she was seeing what we we do didn't have. We had more months than we had money, and she was. And I was down here. I was unemployed. Both of us, nobody's working, but God was keeping us. And I was depressed. She was fighting depression. I wasn't fighting. I was depressed, full out. But then God come in. And, you know, he said the scripture talking about putting on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. And God began to give me that song. It's it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. Favor is on your side. And as would you just played. And, you know, God will make darkness light. And it just get to minister me, minister to me. And I had one of those snotty cries. And, uh, <laughs> but God moved through that song. And it has blessed other people through that song. People who have been in hopeless situations, wow. but they had brought light to their darkness. And I just, I really thank God for that. You know, a lot of your music has been that type of life affirming uh, energy and power. I remember, um, when we were in Souls of Fire and as a postgraduate, you would come back and there was some beautiful songs, which was one reason why Michael used to always love to tap you. I think, um, once prisoners of sin. Oh, and you know, that came, uh, Pastor, Pastor Hill, who's going to be with the Lord, was my pastor mm -hmm. at Northside Christian Center in Tulsa. Yeah. Pastor Hill, he was preaching on a sermon and he wanted me to do something for Easter. And that God gave me that. Many of the songs I've written back had written in that time, they came from sermons that Pastor Hill preached or teachings wow. that we had in Bible study. Mm -hmm. Like I delight in you. He was teaching on the Hebrew word toda, which mm -hmm. is a sacrifice of thanksgiving, yeah. thanking God for what he's done, for what he's doing, and for blessings that have not even manifested yet. Yeah. Um, we toda. release our faith. Yeah. By praising God and thanking him in advance, yeah. putting a down payment, praise mm -hmm. on him. So a lot of those songs came from that teaching and being in yeah. the word. Wow. He was truly a forerunner when it came to faith teaching. You know, even I, us coming out of the Church of God in Christ and then going to Oral Roberts University in a very highly charismatic church. And then to find a black ministry that was very solid. He yeah. wasn't a lot of fluff. He wasn't a lot of fluff. It was just a no. lot of very, uh, as the meat of the word. <laughs> yes. The we, meat of the word. Yeah. Yes, we fasted and prayed. Friday night, we had all night prayer. We mm -hmm. he, he was a very quiet kind of man. Yes. But he That's was, true. when you get in the word, that was what drove Pastor Hill. That was what gave him his energy, the word of God. And he also, he was from Church of God in Christ. He was raised in Church of God in Christ. And he went to ORU as well and Rhema. So yes, that's did. why we did it all at Northside. Yeah, 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 indeed. Yeah, you know, even when I went back, Keith, I don't know if you knew this, but when I went back to Oral Roberts University uh, as a mature adult, since I didn't finish the first time, I actually was sometime fellowship over at uh, North Northside. Uh, Christian Center, and he was still pastoring, and it was it was a truly a delight. Uh, another thing that I found delightful about your music, and um, of course, there's so many <laughs> stories that we could tell. But I remember when you would train us as singers, and one phrase that we always used to laugh at, <laughs> and I cried at, was "Be impeccably one, be impeccably <laughs> one." <laughs> Here I was, I, I felt I was the baby. My voice hadn't fully matured and you were stretching me. And it's so funny because in choir, in high school, you know, I felt I had, you know, I had made it, you know, had done, a, you know, some concert choir, had made all state, all West, you know, alternates included. And then when I attend Oral Roberts University, most people don't know, I was a music major first oh. and then Souls of Fire came and I'm like, well, I don't need to major in music because we rehearsed all the time. <laughs> And that's when I ended up in <laughs> in communication. But when you would come and train us, I would oftentimes cry. I would, I would be, 
you i had become so uh, you know so conditioned to seeing past my insecurities about my voice that i would literally be having tears going to my face y'all probably thought i was being spirit filled but i was actually <laughs> my feelings were so hurt because being impeccably one blend blend but i that I, that training has helped me even beyond the music even beyond the music um, the, your training and those that I encountered uh, the first and second time I went to RU has really shaped me as who I am. Now, there's another song because uh, we have been able to maintain our friendship over the decades. You recently sent me, um, was it You Are Holy? What's, what's that song? You, you Are Holy. I changed the title. It used to be The Refreshing. The refreshing that comes from your presence all the joy that comes from knowing you, your cool water to my desert places. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I got you on the spot. Matter of fact, let me just let 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 the music talk for itself. All right, okay. here you go. Ooh.
I love your music. I love your writing. I love your heart. And I know we can't talk forever, you know, uh, on this interview, but you can always come back. What Ooh, is something that to. you will want to share with those who have known you through the ages, through the years, and for those that you're still instilling as a music educator to this day? What are some of the things you really want to make sure we understand about you? I love I love God. I love singing about him, his word. I thank God um, for the teachers that he placed in my life. Pastor Hill, my dad, my family, where I, where I came up. I thank God for those people that have spoken into my life and encouraged me on the way. I love music. I love writing music and talking about God and talking about life. Some things I just write about experiences that I've gone through. I think because we have the Song of Solomon, I think we should be the greatest writers of love songs. Yes. And some people say, oh, that's the flesh. That's it. What, you Did you read uh, Song of Solomon? I, I've read it. I've read it. Come on now. So if you, get, you, you, know, you can't God even say said. all of that. You can't even say all of that. <laughs> it can be censored. But right. you know, I love music. I love melody. And there's nothing like the marriage between music and the lyrics. When the lyrics, when you find that marriage of the lyrics, they link together and there is a mutual expression. I just I just love that. It's like putting a puzzle together. And I I just thank God for and the other thing, most of all, I thank God for marrying the right person let's yes let's let's give some love to your wife oh my is wife a is a and this and i'm not just being nice no no my no, wife see. is uh amazing when i have concerts the person that i ask to pray is adrian michelle childress because that's the person that i know is praying through because what i see at home she is the same person at home she is a woman of God in the midnight hour with her worship <laughs> songs playing on her computer at three o'clock in the morning. Yeah. That is the same person that she is when she's praying to somebody from praying for somebody else. That I am so blessed. Yeah. I'm so blessed for Aaron, my daughter Aaron, and my son Ayo. They love God. So when the four of us get together, we have a good time. And we can laugh and act crazy and we can cry and be spiritual and love the Jesus, you know, but it doesn't just stop there. We enjoy being together, you know, and that's a blessing. That's a blessing. That's a blessing. You know, I've always enjoyed that about you. Um, of course, we all have struggled with our own individual as temperamental artists that we are. We Ooh, so yes. deep, I'm we're so deeply feeling and to be able to have been God and bless you with a marriage and children that allow you that space to be all of Keith. I, I've always enjoyed seeing that over the years. And uh, I've always enjoyed also when we would connect like now and get a chance to holler and laugh. <laughs> yeah. about the memories. And why did we laugh? I didn't come here to ride on the no, no winter. I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. I didn't go that summer to ride on no Winnebago. Uh -uh. <laughs> Inside joke, ladies and gentlemen. Inside <laughs> joke. But I tell you, thank God for even those experiences because it yes. was truly something that made us who we are. Yes, and it really God did. Has used who who these little black children from the yes. inner cities to touch lives, and for that yes. I am grateful. I mean to. Uh, through, uh, through our mistakes, yes. through all, all that we did and what we've been through, all that we are, God used it all to make us. Yeah. And I mean, he has used every inch of our life experiences. Yes. Including those tears. Yes. To make, you know, comfort for others. And for that, I am grateful. Me and too. I'm grateful for you, Keith. And I'm grateful <laughs> for you. I'm so proud of you. I don't know what Thank to you. do. You Thank are you. this uh, a movie script writer. You, the stuff that you write, your 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 prose, your poetry, it is so deep. It <laughs> it is so real. I love it. When I read, it's like yes, 
Thank you. Thank you. And I, I have to say this before we go. Um, for those who don't know, beyond my radio persona uh, and TV persona, I have always had that deepness with my poetry, my songs, my movies. Always it's like one deep sister. <laughs> yes. Yes, you <laughs> are. You are amazing. Thank you, Keith. And, and to know that you've known me since I was a teenager, it blesses my soul. It blesses my soul. Praise God. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Of course, we're getting really sappy on the end of this special, <laughs> special interview. Uh, Keith F. Childress, someone that who is world renowned. We have not even scratched the surface of who he is, both to the kingdom of, of God on, on earth, Hallelujah. into the music industry, and to my life. And for that, I want you all to say, look him up. And if you are someone who understands, you know, the, the phenomenon of Keith Childress, be sure to show him love and share this interview. And thank you, Keith, for saying yes. Thank, thank you, you for asking. I appreciate it. <laughs> All right. All the love, everybody. And definitely be sure to check out the full episode once again on YouTube. Also, it streams on all um, podcast platforms. And uh, thank you all so much for checking us out right here on The Christy Taylor Show. for the